all systems go. Clear for liftoff. What's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. This is officially the last NBA show of the year. Sad times. It is a little sad. MLB, though, right around the corner. Tomorrow MLB starts. Tomorrow is when MLB will be our featured shows. 1 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. We'll get Hamwich. We'll get G Rising for opening day. There will be no NBA shows. That does not mean Rio will be going away, though. They'll still have the slate plan, which is up on the site right now dialed in like always you do have to be a premium member for that um we'll still have our showdown content monday through saturday which has been going on throughout the year like usual ownership core reports cash reports same thing as always but just won't have these shows so if you're not a member you're not going to be here in rio talk too much about nba occasionally on some big slates he will do a quick hit video that's posted on the channel but basketball content still here baseball in full force that will be getting the shows I do want to bring that up to you, though, because if you do want to head over to the nation, no better time to get in. MLB here now, NBA, PGA, MMA, NASCAR, all the sports going on, NHL going on as well. Head over to ShipAnation.com. Use promo code MAYO. Get you 10% off any package. I will say, if you're just interested in the summer for MLB, head over to – I'll say this. Head over to ShipAnation Twitter because in our Discord we have an announcement – That means you already are a member. If so, we do have an MLB package that came out, though. Monthly comes up to a dollar a day if you use the promo code MLB15. If you just want MLB full season, use that promo code as well. If you want all the sports, use that promo code Mayo. Gets you 10% off. Yes, Richie Smalls. MLB show tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern. Go Clex in here. Jasmine taking the words out of my mouth. Big boy slate indeed. Lyle in here. Takedown in here. Pair by Romy as well. Appreciate y'all hanging out. My man, Rio, enough is enough. I let you hang in. How was your Wednesday afternoon going? What are your thoughts on this big boy slate indeed? Yeah, Wednesday's going good. Just published the slate plan right before we got on. Um, Yeah, a little bit of a bittersweet day for sure. Not having to do these shows with you every week is going to suck. Um, You know, I love, love talking basketball, even though we've talked a bunch, how much of a grind it's been doing every single showdown slate, every single... Uh, slate plan pretty much every day since November been uh, been a grind but you know can't complain getting you know getting paid to talk about sports and talk to you and hang out with all these people in in discord and and these live show chats every every single day has been really cool so super blessed about the community Um, but yeah definitely looking forward to a little bit of a uh, downtime get a little bit more time outside with the with the girlfriend, with the dog, with the family, and a little bit less time behind a uh, behind the computer screen, but yeah, this is a pretty pretty fun slate. Um, Ten games, obviously a lot of injury news, uh, really big injury news. Obviously got the SGA stuff before we went live, which is which is good because we can break that down. Um, but yeah, I mean a lot of a lot of big totals, some some games like potentially could blow out, some really good spots. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Got a Millie up top, and then we got a couple members in there tonight. So hopefully, give you guys some good information for that. Absolutely. And you yourself won a ticket in that yesterday as well. So good luck to you, big boy out there, to finish it off, what, 3333 or something like that? 3300 out there, bigger than usual. But yes, I will echo what you said, Rio. You have been grinding since November. NBA is as big of a grind as it gets, as all you guys know. You have done as good as anybody out there in the industry. Pretty much. I mean, I'm on here doing shows with you. We got Ham in here. We got Nades. We're all working together at NBA, but you by far have been the soul guy in the NBA streets at Ship Nation, in the Discord all the time, helping people out. The people definitely appreciate it. You're very sharp and you do very you are very good at what you do. So we appreciate that, Rio. He will still have his NBA content throughout the playoffs. Plenty of money to be still made in the playoffs as well. Showdown content will be there. Again, it is all going to be premium, though, outside of a couple quick hit videos from Rio. So if you want to join, you got to get premium content to see what Rio's putting up every single day. Plenty of edge and uh, NBA playoff DFS, too. Watching the games, knowing rotations, matchups, etc. It's a whole different ballgame than regular season DFS. 
baseball is a grind or that has to be a basketball emoji. If that's a, oh, it looks like seams. Baseball ain't necessarily a grind. You just stack some teams. It's a grind mentally when you have your seven implied uh, Dodgers team in Coors Field that goes, puts up two runs and your guys go 0 for 5. That's the grind in MLB or your pitcher gets blown up in round one. Feels pretty easy to build teams though with stacks and stuff. NBA with all the news, late swaps, et cetera, is the grind. Lachlan in here though. Appreciate everyone hanging out. Like we always say, that's enough of that though, Rio. We got to get into it. We got plenty of ball to talk about. Injury news, there's a bunch of them. We'll talk about it when we go game by game. But, yes, SGA ruled out. Definitely a big part of this slate before we came. Ben's in here. James is in here as well. First game of the night, we have the Brooklyn Nets and the Washington Wizards. 220 and a half total. Brooklyn, three and a half point favorites. Injury report in this one. Brooklyn side, Cam Thomas is questionable. Cam Johnson is out. On the Washington side, they're without Tyus, Bilal Kulabale, and that's pretty much all that matters on that side. <laughs> Throw it to you right away in this game. Cam Thomas, pretty important injury news. Uh, I think if he plays, I have some interest at 7.2K. We love picking on Washington. You've mentioned it all year. Cam Thomas will chuck. He looks to be coming in with a little bit of ownership, though, at that shooting guard position if he does play. If he's out, Dennis Schroeder gets a big bump. I hate clicking the name Bridges. He gets a little bump as well, though. I'll throw it to you on the Bridges note. What are you doing in this game? Yeah, Bridges is I'm I'm done playing him. I've just lost too much money playing him. I just don't I don't think he has it anymore. I think that I just don't think that he was uh he's the alpha of, of any team. He was kind of I don't know. I, th I still think he's a really good defender, but like easier to hide his offensive abilities when you're playing alongside uh Devin Booker and DeAndre Aiden and all those guys, CP three, those type of guys when he was with the Suns. I just don't think that he's uh the true alpha of this team. It's definitely Cam Thomas, but yeah, it's yeah, you know, big injury news for sure. If he sits, definitely giving a big boost to probably the same guys that we saw play last last game. Uh, I just don't think they want to give Lonnie Walker any run. Really, I think they're just more concerned about giving these younger guys run, like Jalen Wilson, Trenton Watford. Um, yeah, I mean, I, in terms of his injury designation, though, don't really have a strong lean whether he's going to be in or out because he had uh, back spasms that just kind of flared up right before the game. It was actually during warmups when it happened. And yeah, I mean, anytime that happens, it's kind of kind of tough to gauge because that can literally happen, you know, randomly throughout the game. It, 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 he could get midday downgrade or get ruled out during the game if he does play. We've seen like Jalen Smith uh, be ruled out post lock multiple times with the same back spasms. So yeah, it's a, a little bit of a tricky situation. I don't really have a lean if he's in or out. If he's in, then that's pretty easy for me to get off of pretty much all of these Nets guys. I mean, I have a little bit of interest in him just because the matchup is great, like you said. But I will say the Wizards have been playing pretty solid defensively lately. The uh, winners of three straight games, their defense has been pretty solid. But we know like we know what they are. They're a team that's going to give up a ton of rim points. Uh, they don't really have a bunch of great on-ball defenders. I think that, like, Johnny Davis has been playing a little bit more. He's a pretty solid uh, defender outside of being pretty much terrible at everything offensively. But, yeah, I mean, not too excited about this game as a whole. I think Cam yeah. Well, he's uh, – you know, you, you guys have – you guys got some good players out there, but he's not one of them. I know. Uh, I had to bring it up. We always talk about the good. <laughs> had to bring up the bad. He's been yeah. around lacrosse central in the in the system for a while. Yeah, he's got to he's got to do something about that shot. He looks like a, I don't know, like a fourth grader trying to shoot a three pointer. Him or so can from deep if your life depended on it. I, I man, that's the, I think <laughs> I'd say so can just because we've seen him make a couple. I don't even know. I've probably seen Giant Davis make two three pointers in, and I've watched uh, a, probably way too much Wizards basketball this season. Um. Yeah, hopefully you can get that figured out. But, yeah, good, pretty solid defender. I think he's definitely contributed in, in that aspect. Um, obviously, you know, like, Jordan Poole is not that great of a defender. I think Denny's okay. Kuzma, not that great. Kispert's kind of okay. Um, but, yeah, I would, I would expect their rim protection to be pretty bad as a whole rest, the rest of the season moving forward. So, yeah, I always like attacking the uh, the centers, the center position against Washington. So, Nick Claxton, 6.4K, looks pretty solid. They're not really giving um, Dayron Sharp much minutes anymore lately, so it's kind of freed up more run for Claxton. We've seen you know mid thirties from him, which is really good at six point four K. So he would probably be my favorite option right now if Cam Thomas gets ruled in. If he gets ruled out, then Dennis Schroeder looks like a really strong option because 
he had a really, really good role last game. Uh, led the league in touch time with over nine minutes. That's just a one game sample, but um, still the, the touch time is going to be there for him. The role is going to look really good. He, his drives are way up this season. Uh, I think he's third in the league in drives per game um, in the month of March. So yeah, if Cam Thomas misses, I think Schroeder is a pretty solid play. And then, yeah, Jalen Wilson, 3.4K would get the start again, would look like a pretty solid value. Uh, I think Trent Warford would be in consideration if uh, if Cam Thomas does miss, because I think they want to give him some minutes and probably not give Lenny Walker minutes. But, yeah, right now I'm just looking at Claxton and Schroeder. Um, and then pretty much nothing on the Wizards side of things. I think that Denny is is okay, 7.2K. But, yeah, I don't know. Just I don't really want to attack this Wizards team right now. I think there's some better spots on the slate. You said you were good with Cam Thomas if he does play? Or not, yeah. still not interested as – in the mid tier build seven two, no, I, I would have some interest in him. I just don't think that he would like probably in like a three max, three max and below. I'm not sure I'd get to him, but definitely if I was running like twenty to one hundred fifty lineups, I would for sure have a sprinkle just because the matchup is really good. What um, about our man Abdia? Yeah, I he got the night off before last game, but yeah, this last game we watched. He played in Nukes mm-hmm. for you. Got yep. the day off, mid thirties minutes. You can get behind him. Yeah, for sure, because the the Nets defense, um, their interior defense, rim defense is dead last in the month of March. And Denny kind of does most of his damage right around the rim with you know put put putbacks and cuts and layups and things like that. So yeah, I, I wouldn't mind Denny. I don't think I'm getting to Kuzma. Eight point four K seems a little bit too expensive. And then like Jordan Poole, pretty solid role, but almost seven K for him is kind of uncomfortable. Matchup is pretty decent against uh, Dennis Schroeder, but yeah, I think Denny would be my preferred option. I also don't think that Holmes is, is too bad either. He's been playing really well lately, 16, 14, and 15 rebounds in his last three games, 25 plus DK points, six of his last eight games. I think that he's kind of running away with the starting job right now as a center, at least for the time being, while Marvin Bagley still makes his way back from injury. So I think that he's he's pretty decent as a value option with a little bit of upside. Yeah, good breakdown. Last question in this game before we keep it rolling. Assuming Cam Thomas is out, would you prefer – Schroeder or Giddy, if you had to pick one, 6,300 Schroeder, 59 Giddy. Obviously, no SGA, so Giddy's definitely popping as a strong play. Schroeder would be a great play as well. You can, as Tambo says, my lineup's still like DraftKings doesn't make me choose one. You can definitely play both, but if you had to pick one, who would it be? Yeah, it's Giddy for sure. I like by, it. By, by a wide margin. Even if Cam, Cam Tom's out by a wide margin. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, I think both will be pretty chalky. Giddy's got the shooting guard eligibilities, which is nice. But if Cam Thomas is out, 6'3", Dennis Schroeder, I expect to get a good bit of ownership, a lot of usage to go around. What's mm-hmm. going on, Charlie? What's going on, Kid Lining? Hope you all doing well. Yeah, don't go back to Lonnie. He left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouth. Take down the guy. Love seeing you in the Discord. I got to get you in back in the Discord as well again. Monthly, six-month, annual packages do get you access to the Discord, and it's in the email um, when you sign up, you get an email, has instructions how to get in there. Let's keep it rolling, though. That was enough time on Brooklyn, Washington. This game, a lot less appealing. will take a lot less time on my end. Cleveland Cavaliers, Charlotte Hornets, 206.5 total. Cleveland, 10.5 point favorites. No injury news on either side. Low total, big spread, no injury news, 10 game slates. And eh, what do you got? <laughs> yeah, pretty much the same for me. I am only looking at I mean, matchup wise, it's just you want to attack the Charlotte with uh, with big. So like, you know, I don't think you're getting some Moby just because the minutes restriction on him right now at seven point one k. So Jared Allen is pretty much the only guy that is in my player pool right now on the Cleveland side of things. I think that like Garland does have a good matchup, but the role hasn't been what we've expected from him uh, with Donovan Mitchell, you know, being out. Usage has not been that good. The drives are down. He's just not as aggressive. And Max Struess is back, so I guess it takes a little bit of usage Wait, upside away from or him. Or is he Q? Or is he pr- – actually, I missed it. I So, obviously, yeah, what is Struess? Is he is he probable now or is he questionable? He's questionable but leaning towards playing. So, I think he's going to play tonight. Cool. All right. Yeah, I missed – yeah. And there's nothing on the Charlotte side. My bad. Yeah. No, it's all good. Um, yeah, so it's really just Jared Allen on the Cleveland side of things. Done pretty good in this matchup. Hasn't really seen – too big of a rebounding hit with Mobley back. Um, and I think that he's pretty safe from that right now, as long as Mobley is kind of in the mid 20s. So, yeah, Jared Allen would be my favorite option. And then on the Charlotte side, they're pretty much a full X out for me. I don't really see any reason to get to these guys. I think that, like Brandon Miller is 
okay to keep your player pool at 6.5K. Saw some more ball handling last game. Um, but, yeah, nothing – Nothing really stands out for me in this one. Just uh, just Jared Allen. Yeah, someone mentioned Poku. He didn't – Rio didn't mention him, so I wouldn't. I think uh, now that we have like Bruno Fernando at 4-4, Carson Wallace is another play- – Carson Wallace, I always say Carson. Carson Wallace at 4K with no SGA there. If Cam Thomas misses, you might have the Wilsons, the Watfords, the mid two. I mean, at the end of the day, like there isn't – if you want to like spend all your salary and all the way up, you have two guys above 10K. AD might not even play at 10-4, LeBron at 10-2, but it's not the Lucas, the Giannis as we had yesterday. I don't think we really need to go dumpster diving with some unknowns like yesterday. Hope for 16 before the Miami news that changed the whole slate. But we're talking, we'll take 16 for Pat Con to get a Luca, whatever, Giannis, whatever. Not a slate like that um, where I'd be punting a Poku or taking more unnecessary risks. So, yeah, I like your Allen shout. I, probably a game fully cross off, though, low total. Big spread, no injury news. Keep it rolling. Plenty of games to talk about on this slate. Next game, Golden State Warriors, Orlando Magic. 218 total. Orlando, four and a half point favorites. We have no Kaminga. Or no, excuse me. Kaminga's questionable. Trace Jackson Davis is questionable. Um, Trace Jackson missed last game. So very interesting. If you have a lean there on the Orlando side, Caleb Houston's questionable. Gary Harris out. Doesn't mean too much. In terms of ownership on this game, one of the lowest owned games on the slate, I think. Now the Trace Jackson Davis news doesn't change ownership one bit. So regardless, this game locks at 7 p.m. Eastern. I should have mentioned too, both FanDuel DraftKings the same. All these games lock within an hour, 7 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Eastern. So we will get, hopefully that AD news, we'll get there at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's the main news that we're waiting on. Still plenty of other Q takes throughout. Hopefully we get most of them though. But, yeah, I don't see really ownership. Any injury tag on this one, I don't really think changes much for me. I'll throw it to you. Orlando side is much more appealing. Even if Dex, Jackson Davis or Kaminga, if they both don't play, they have enough guys in the front court. I don't want to mess with it. So, yeah, I guess start with uh, Warrior side since I think it will be quicker and then go to the Orlando side. Um, yeah, so I don't I don't really have a lean on these – these uh, Q tags either we saw Trace Jackson Davis miss last game with it's just knee soreness so I'm sure that he's probably okay to play tonight uh, maybe they just want to give him the night off last night give Kaminga the night off tonight um, but yeah I mean the the Warriors still need to win pretty much every game from here on out the Rockets Rockets are right on their tail so yeah I think that whoever's gonna play can play but if Kaminga misses then it, it's not really enough to make these mid-tier guys like the Wiggins, the Chris Pauls, the Podzemskis, like great plays by any means, but I think that they're still in play. Um, I'm not really looking to too much on the Warriors side of things. The, the match have been one of the best defenses all season long. They're uh, top three in defensive rating this whole season. Um, take away three-pointers with some of the best, then one of the best catch-and-shoot defenses in the league, which is kind of the Warriors' main way of getting points. Um <clears throat> But yeah, I mean they're they're still vulnerable in the pick and roll. So like Curry, I guess, to make your player pool, but I just don't think you can get there. They're pretty strict about his minutes right now. They got him to, you know, 30, 31 last two games. Steve Kerr said they want to keep him right around 30. So I would expect that. And I just don't think that you can really get there at eight point six K with somebody getting just thirty points unless they're like Victor Wembanyama. I, I can't get to Steph Curry there. Um Jonathan Isaac, you can't get there in that many minutes. Oh, I would for sure take that, but he's only 4K, so that would be great. Um, yeah, so I don't know. The, the Warriors pretty easy X out for me tonight, I think. I would have to see what, what the projections say because I don't really see Kaminga changing too much, but, like, Andrew Wiggins has been playing a little bit better. Um, played 31 minutes last night against Miami, put up 31 DraftKings points, even put up 44 against uh, Memphis a few games ago. So he's kind of coming on a little bit as a scorer. So I would, I wouldn't mind him, but I just don't think that it might not be needed. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty okay getting away from the golden state side of things. And then on the Orlando side of things, yeah, I'm just gonna be a max one Paulo and Franz, even at the price tags, Franz's price come way down, but the production kind of has too. I always talk about playing him against weak rim defenses. That doesn't really match up too well with how the Warriors play defense. The Warriors has been kind of giving up a lot of three pointers this month, but not really something you have to worry about when you're playing the uh, Orlando Magic. They are the highest um, rim scoring frequency team. I don't know how to, how to word that, but they get the most of their points 
at the rim than any other team in the league. Um, so, yeah, they don't really have, like, a ton of lights-out three-point shooters, so I'm not really looking to get to many of these Orlando guys. I think Cole Anthony is pretty solid as a value right now, but this could definitely change with with some injury news. Like, the, I mean, DeJounte Murray, like, if he gets ruled out, I would prefer Trent Forrest for $1,000 cheaper. If uh, Anthony Davis gets ruled out, I'm preferring some of those Laker guys over Cole Anthony. Um but, I mean, he does – like, the minutes are looking pretty good for him now that Caleb Houston is out – or uh, that Gary Gary Harris is out and Caleb Houston is questionable. Uh, we saw him get the second-half start for Caleb Houston last game when he got ruled out mid-game. So, I think that if Houston does get ruled out, then he probably would look like a pretty solid value. And we know that he's got really big upside, regardless if you're coming off the bench or starting. So, yeah, that's how I'm kind of approaching that one. And then Jonathan Isaac, man, that was, uh, that was tilting. But luckily it didn't kill me at the – at the live final, we were watching all those guys in the top of the leaderboards had Jonathan Isaac at like 4% going off for probably one of his best games of his career. Um, but I mean, yeah, if the minutes are creeping up a little bit, if he gets to the low twenties, then he looks like a pretty strong value as well. We know that he's been pretty consistent lately, like right around, you know, 20 to 25 fantasy points pretty much in every game outside of the one against Charlotte. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, if he's getting closer to like the mid twenties then he looks really strong. So yeah, looking at the values a little bit on Orlando and then um, spend-ups on both sides are kind of not in play for me tonight. Yeah, I, I wonder how much – obviously, we were watching a lot of games and you had no one in that in that one game, so we didn't watch it too much. But those Isaac minutes, like how much was it because he was just so efficient? Like 10 for 13 from the field, he still only played 22 minutes. Like, or is it – I mean, we're going to want this guy to play 25 minutes in the playoffs maybe or just – have other ways to go if we want to go a smaller you know what I mean like do you think it's more so ramping him up for playoff time and we're going to need him since I think he should be getting mid-20s minutes for Orlando to be the best possible team they can I mean on defense so long I mean if he shoots like he did last game too but what what do you like what minutes projection do you feel good about for Jonathan Isaac I mean probably like 20 I would say I think that 23 is probably the high end they're just they're very, very cautious with him. Obviously, we know all the injury history and stuff with him. Uh, I just don't think – I think that just the long-term outlook for him is not really worth upping the minutes. I think they want to keep him right around 20 to 22. I think that it was probably a result of him playing really well, shooting really hot, and also the injuries. So, yeah, that's, that's I think that 20 is probably the right projection for him from a minute standpoint. And then thoughts quick on, like – Cole Anthony's going to get some ownership. I think he's a fine play. Case and Wallace will still be higher on that 4K. Thoughts on that pivot and thoughts on like the Jonathan Isaac pivot if you wanted to like get away from Bruno. Now, Bruno's just center eligible. Isaac's got power forward eligibility, which is nice, but kind of in the same price point looking at chalk pivots. Any, you got like Cole Anthony, could you play him over Wallace in a vacuum? Could you play Isaac over Fernando? Or it's mainly you would need to upgrade or play both, et cetera. Um, yeah, I probably would prefer Wallace over Cole Anthony. And then I think I probably do prefer Bruno over Isaac as well, even with the positional stuff. Um, All right. Yeah. Yeah, you can play obviously in both. Just looking at other pivots, 10 games late in this range. We'll get to this question in the next game. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the questions I keep asking Rio. So that's the Magic and the Warriors. I think even if Trace and Kaminga are out, you mentioned Wiggins, he'll be low-owned. Probably a full fade for me. Yeah, I don't even want Clay. None of them. Orlando side, I like your max one of Franz Paulo. I don't love either on this slate. I probably prefer Franz with the price discount if choosing, but it's really the value. Cole Anthony or Isaac. I prefer Cole Anthony um, to Isaac if having to choose. Shooting guard eligibility is nice. A little minutes bump maybe without Gary Harris. We'll keep it rolling next game again. Appreciate everyone hanging out. If you want to do us a favor, like button helps us out a ton. Subscribe button helps us out as well. Bringing new shows on this channel or Ship and Nation almost every single day, but they will be going from NBA to MLB. Like I mentioned in the pre show, you can go rewind if you want to know our whole schedule. We'll have all of our NBA content premium, quick hit once in a while from Rio, but you do have to be a member every if you want Rio's information every single day. Core reports, cash reports, ceiling rankings, all of that will stay heading into the playoffs as well. Use that promo code MAYO for 10% off. Next game on the slate, Rio, another big spread. New York Knicks, Toronto Raptors, 212 total. Knicks, 13.5-point favorites. 
the second biggest on the slate. Injury news in this one. Excuse me. Nothing on the Raptors side. Nick side, though. Mitch Rob questionable. Alec Burks questionable. Very interesting. Um, I'll throw it to you right away because do you have a lean on Mitch Rob? He has not played since, I mean, man, when was it? Uh, December 8th, we haven't seen Mitch Rob play. Why I ask this is because Hartenstein is on a freaking tear. This has five games, at least 37 DK points. He had a 10% usage last game. Like, I love the guys that can get there in so many ways. Good floor ceiling combo, it looks like. Now, if Mitch Rob plays, I'd be curious to see your thoughts on that because I already don't love 5.7K is fair. Center on this slate, there's multiple good ones. 13 and a half point spread scares me, though. The Raptors have been awful. Like Hartenstein ain't going to play into a blowout, so his rotation could be cut. Tell me if you think I'm wrong. I like Dante. I like Josh Hart. I like Hartenstein. Yeah, probably not Brunson in this spread, but I'm worried about the spread. Toronto's been awful. They're giving it up to every everywhere lately. I mean, do you need a rule max one Dante Hart? Thoughts on Hartenstein and then like Robinson Burks. Do you have any lean on these Q tags? Because um, if this game stays close, someone on the Knicks is getting there. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that the game doesn't even need to be close for some of these Knicks guys to get there. I mean, you you mentioned it. The Toronto Raptors just been awful all over the court defensively. This team is just – they lack talent up and down the board. They lack any sort of on-ball defenders now that, um, you know, Scotty Barnes is out. Uh, all the, even R.J. Barrett, I think, is pretty – I mean, quickly both pretty solid defenders in their own right. Who They should be getting those guys back pretty soon. So this will be a different conversation – uh, heading down the line a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, right now this current iteration of the, the Toronto Raptors roster is just terrible defensively. So I have a ton of interest in these next guys. Um, I'll start with the Hardenstein, Mitch Rob stuff because, yeah, they they uh, uh, Adrian Wojnarowski came out with a report saying that they are expecting to have Mitchell Robinson back tonight. Obviously, he's been out since December, so he's going to have a very strict minutes limit. I'm expecting probably two rotations um, or maybe, you know, three rotations, five minutes a piece, something like that. But he's going to be right around 15 minutes is what I would guess. And, I mean, that doesn't really – I don't think it takes much upside off of Hardenstein because even if you look at his minutes, he hasn't played more than uh, – he hasn't touched 30 minutes in a game since February 6th, and he's still getting it done. Like you said, 34 DK points, five straight games, been, you know, flashing upside in the 40s as well, gets it done with the blocks, the steals. Uh, the rebounding rates. I mean, this is a great spot for for him to get a big, uh, have a big rebounding game, just because the uh, Raptors have been really struggling, uh, especially on offensive rebounding lately. So I think that he's totally fine, even with Mitchell Robinson there. I'm still expecting the same minutes from him. Um, that's just going to kind of take like Precious out of this rotation. Probably would take Jericho Sims completely out, and anybody else, any of those secondary guys that were getting a little bit of minutes would just be completely out of the rotation in terms of being uh, the backup front court pieces. So, yeah, I still think the hard side's still pretty good. But, yeah, these these guys up top, Jalen uh, Brunson, Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo, all look really good. I would say that Brunson is probably my least favorite just because uh, Tibbs is actually playing it pretty smart right now. He's not extending his minutes as much in the blowout versus Detroit. They were up by, what, 20, 30 points at some point. They still had Josh Hart and Dante DiVincenzo out there in the fourth quarter, like pretty much halfway through the fourth quarter they were still playing. Uh, but Brunson didn't see the court, so he, he only got the 30 minutes, still put up 41 drafting points. If at, for some reason this game does stay close, Brunson is for sure going to have a great game because they just have no good on-ball defenders. Their pick-and-roll defense has been terrible. Their rim defense is one of the worst in the league now, and Jalen Brunson third in the league in drives per game, uh, fifth most points per game off of drives. So, yeah, I mean, matchup-wise, love it for Brunson, but very, very tough for me to see the, the Raptors keeping it close, so I'll probably – won't have too much of him. I think that Hart and DiVincenzo are, are two guys that are very safe from a minute standpoint, regardless of the blowout. Uh, they're just going to be out there a ton. Yeah, I mean, I don't have much to say. Like, Hart is playing 40-plus minutes a night. Dante DiVincenzo is playing 40-plus minutes a night. Both are playing really well. Josh Hart's getting, you know, racking up triple doubles right now. His rebounding's are, rebounding rates are great. Might take a little bit of a hit if he's playing alongside Mitchell Robinson, but that's about, you know, probably – eight to 10 minutes of overlap, maybe maybe 12, something like that. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, and then Dante DiVincenzo just been shooting lights out. He's shot 15 for 33 from deep over his last two games. Shot 11 for 20 last game. 
Uh, Raptors give up a ton of three-pointers. So, yeah, I think both these guys have a ton of upside again, and I'll have for sure have a lot of them across my uh, MME portfolio. Um, Raptors are pretty much a fade, though. I think that if you are considering these guys, it's probably from a blowout angle. So, like, Javon Freeman Liberty is a guy that we've been kind of playing a little bit. He's starting to get up there from a minute standpoint. Um, you know, reboundings look pretty good. The assists are coming up a little bit. Um, and then Kobe Simmons, a guy that they just signed recently, played 17 minutes last game. I think that he's kind of interesting from a blowout standpoint, but that's like very large field type stuff. I'm not looking to play him in a single entry or anything like that. But yeah, these guys, the main rotation guys like Kelly Olenek all the way down to Grady Dick, I don't think I'll have any of them. You want to make a rule with Hart and Dante, right? You'd be fine playing both of them? Yeah, I think that's fine. I would say probably like two of the three with with Brunson in there. Yeah, definitely would, would do that. And Brunson's my least favorite, like you mentioned, because of the the price. And you mentioned the blowout. He has more blowout risk. But if this game stays close, if – I mean, he's going to be – Brunson's probably sub 10%. Like if people want to go to this game, it's going to be Dante. It's going to be Hart. There's enough people in the high 9K range that people would rather spend on – of DeJounte that we're going to get to if AD misses, like LeBron would be nice. There's chats, Jalen Willie, like there's other people where I don't think Brunson gets too much ownership, especially when they see the spread. So yeah, if this game stays close, I don't, I don't mind a contrarian Brunson and chalky spots, nothing really on the Toronto side. Let me touch oh. on the Brunson thing really quickly, just to kind of build off what you're saying, because I do think that it very interesting. If you're building on the solver, this is something you can do. Um, but, like, if you're playing Jalen Brunson, I think that you are expecting the game to remain close, which means some of these Toronto guys kind of have to get there unless the game is just extremely low scoring and Brunson plays full minutes just because the game is, like, 80 to 80 heading into like, the Trent. last couple of minutes. Yeah, Gary exactly. Like, so you're, run back, make yeah, you're running back, Gary Trent. I think that Olenek is probably somebody you could consider running back to, but 7.2K is fully priced for him. I wasn't even – considering playing him much in the mid six Ks. Um, so yeah, Gary Trent would be somebody that I would consider as a run back. And you can just make a rule, say like if Jalen Brunson, then boost Kelly Olenek, Gary Trent, Bruce Brown, um, probably all the way down to like Grady Dick is, is the guys that I would be boosting if you're playing some Jalen Brunson tonight. <laughs> John Tate back. <laughs> uh, thanks for that, Jordan. Yeah, it's been it's been a great year for sure. We uh, we appreciate those words. You're always in chat. You're the man, another Wisconsin guy. So I like to tell Rio, but let's carry it over to MLB. Indeed, let's keep it rolling though. Still plenty of games left on this ten game slate. Next one, this one should be pretty good though if it stays close. Atlanta Hawks, Portland Trailblazers, two seventeen total. Hawks ten and a half point favorites. Why I mentioned this game should be good is because there's injuries on the Atlanta side. Obviously they're still without the Trey young. So without a Kong Wu, no Jalen Johnson and DeJounte is questionable. Obviously big news, 7 30 PM Eastern though. We should get it before lock. If DeJounte plays, expect him to be a popular spend up. He's been playing good ball, good matchup, no Trey, obviously. So DeJounte news, very big on this slate. Portland news, Aiton's questionable. Matisse Thibault's questionable. Matisse Thibel obviously doesn't mean much. Great defender, though. Means nothing in DFS. Aiton, questionable, definitely means something. If he's out, Duop Reed probably, well, he will get to start. 5K on DraftKings. Center isn't great today. Um, the most popular center in this game, actually, I think, is Bruno Fernando on the other side of this game. Clint Capella, also interesting. Kind of like that other slate uh, on Saturday, Rio. Both Capella and Bruno were popular. They split the center minutes. They both have shown they can get there. They both are center eligible, which isn't great. But center isn't phenomenal on this slate, so I think you could get away with it a bit. Throw it to you with DeJounte. Do you have a lean on him? And then, yeah, I mean, do you have a lean on Aiton, I guess, and break down this game because there's a lot of ownership going to it. As the most expensive guy, just say DeJounte and Aiton were out. The most expensive guy in this game is 6.5K. Like, it would be a load-up game. 10-point spread, though, pretty big. Talk about the injuries first and break it down from there. Um, yeah, I don't don't know too much about the DeJounte injury. Hasn't really been a guy that's been injured too much this year. We've seen a couple times he's dealt with, like, a hamstring designation but played through it. Um, so he's pretty, pretty durable as a player. So I'm kind of thinking that he's playing. I think that his back is just sore from uh, putting the team on it the 
pretty much second half of the season since Trey has been sidelined, just getting not a ton of help from his uh, his guys. But yeah, the DeAndre Aid stuff, pretty big as well. We would see Duop Reith play a good bit, and he's been pretty solid as a starter. But yeah, I mean, Aiden, I don't know. He, he's been dealing with this elbow injury. I think that it's legit. And yeah, he could definitely sit. I don't, I think that, that I mean, that's kind of why these games from four to, these 4 p.m. games just aren't games you really want to load up on for this exact reason because, to me, the slate kind of starts at 4.30. There's a couple guys to pick and choose from from these first games, but I think that pretty much the slate from a single entry standpoint starting at 4.30 for me just so I can adjust to this because I would much rather prefer, like I mentioned, if DeJounte were to be out, a Trent Forrest at 3.3K versus Cole Anthony at whatever he is, 4.4K, something like that. Um I would definitely prefer like do wreath and any of the, the cheap centers in these games that we're considering. Um, but yeah, yeah. Cause I mean, this is a really good game environment. The Blazers been one of the worst defenses in the second half of the season. They're uh, have one of the weakest rim defenses. Their transition defense has been terrible all season long. Um, Hawks have been a team to attack earlier this season. They kind of went through a stretch after Trey Young's injury where they were much better defensively for a little bit, like a week or two. And their offense had kind of been struggling, but they've kind of flipped that again. And they're, you know, playing with pace again. Their defense has gotten worse. They've been, you know, very vulnerable at the rim, vulnerable to catch and shoot guys. Um, so, yeah, I mean, from the Portland side of things, if Aiden is in, I would have interest in him because he's just been playing great lately. Uh, in the month of March, he's averaging 46 DK points with a 24 and 14 rebound stat line. Really good matchup against the against Clint Capella and the Hawks' bottom seven rim defense, so he'd be really really strong play. Uh, Scoot, Henderson, Scoot Henderson is getting all the ownership again at the the guard spot for the Blazers, and I, I don't know. He only played 25 minutes against Houston last game, not on any sort of minutes restriction, but it was Delano Banton that's just been kind of outplaying him. I think that at this point in their career, Banton is just the better player. I just don't. They don't really have much of a reason to play Ben over Henderson, just because they've you know invested a, a lot of draft capital into him. So I think that they'll continue to roll out Scoot, but Ben makes us a pretty good, uh, pretty good leverage spot. I'll definitely be max one of those two because I think that they kind of eat into each other pretty negatively. Um, I mean, I, I prefer Ben just because I think that the upside is way bigger on him. We saw him go for fifty six against Houston, played thirty nine minutes. I mean, it's almost got to a point where he's playing so well that you're just kind of. Like as Chauncey Billups, the head coach, is kind of like forced to play him because um, he's just been been really playing well since coming over from the Celtics. So I would prefer Ben. And then I already mentioned Reith. I would love him if Aiden were to be out. Been really good as a starter this season, averaging right around 27 DK points per game without Aiden. Um, kind of had a stinker last game against Houston, but it's a pretty tough matchup. Houston, really good overall defense. So I, I wouldn't think that too much about this matchup. And then these secondary guys like Kamara and Chris Murray, I mean, they're – I don't know. I would be max one of those guys just because I think they're kind of like the same player to me. Um, and I don't think that like Tybo really changes too much. Maybe these guys get a little bit more run, but yeah, I, I just don't really see too big of an upside for them. Really would be looking at the guys up top from Aiton down to Wreath tonight. Um, I guess Jabari Walker would be kind of interesting too if if Aiden were to miss. We've kind of seen him have some pretty big games at times. Um, I don't know if that, if that comes at the expense of Wreath if you wanted to be like a max one of that, but uh, Jabbar Walker been a pretty solid fantasy fourth minute guy this season, and then the Atlanta side of things really just comes down to Dejounte Murray's status because if Murray's in, I think it's a great spot for him. Uh, matchup should be pretty good. Probably sees a lot of Tumani Kamara, and then if Tybal misses, would be even better for him. Uh, Tybal really solid defender. I know that that's your guy, uh, but yeah, I mean Dejounte has pretty much the best role. Has a Luca type role this season without Trey Young. Leads the team and league in touch time. Leads the team in usage and assist percentage, averaging. Uh, 51.3 DK points per game without Trey this season. Five straight triple double or five straight double doubles, excuse me. Um, yes, yeah, so I think he'd be a really, really good spin up option. Bogdan, I'm okay getting away from at ownership just because I, I prefer him in matchups against teams that funnel defense to three point shooters. This is kind of not the spot for him. Portland's been really solid against three point shooters this season. Uh, surprisingly, one of the better teams at defending the three point line. So I'd be okay getting away from him. Would uh, prefer to get to like Hunter um, at 5.9K because he can get it done in a couple of different ways. And then Capella and Bruno Fernando. I'm going to be a max one of those guys tonight just because the prices are starting to come together a little bit and both only se- only center eligible. I think that it was much easier to get there with Bruno being power forward earlier this season. But um, 
yeah, only center eligible. I think I'm just going to be a max one, and I don't really have a strong lean on either because I like the match for both. We've seen Bruno have really big upside in similar matchups off the bench, and we know that Clint Capella has pretty big upside at this price tag. So, And then, yeah, Vid Krejci and um, Trent Forrest are the guys that I'm considering if DeJounte were to be out. I, I'm definitely not a Capella guy. I would lean Bruno if I had to, but I do think his ownership will be higher. $2,100 savings as well. I'm glad you touched on the Scoot Batten. Uh, Jake asked. I mean, there's no doubt Batten's better. Um, Kid Lyman did mention the minutes for Scoot last game because of foul trouble. Scoot still, though, 35, 36, 29, 25, 36% usage rate the last five. Like, he's chucking. <laughs> At least when you play him, you know he's chucking. Now, four for 17, six for 15, eight for 18, six for, like, it ain't going in. But when it does, he's showing 37, 45 point upside. Banton just so solid. I do like your max one at these prices. Do you say even if DeJounte was out, you didn't like Bogdan and you prefer Hunter? Uh, I, I mean, if, if if he's out, then you have to have interest in him just at 6.5K. Probably going to be the he would be lead chalk. ball handlers at some point. Yeah. So, Guard yeah, forward I mean, eligibility. Yeah. But you still preferred Hunter if you had to pick, even if DeJounte was out. Yeah, probably just because uh, – yeah, I don't know. I, I just prefer Hunter kind of always. I just don't – we haven't really seen the huge games from, from Bogdanovich. Did it against New Orleans, but that's kind of a team that I've mentioned is pretty bad against catch-and-shoot guys. I mean, he shot 7 for 15 from 3 in that game. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I would just prefer DeAndre Hunter. I think he can get done in multiple ways. I like it. Hey, Justin, haven't seen this name in, in YouTube chat. Hope you're doing well, Justin Jennings. Little uh, info right here. Scoot's from the Atlanta area. So there you go. Do you think he'll shoot even a little bit more? He's already been chucking. Doesn't mean it's going to fall, but maybe he does shoot a little bit more. Minutes will definitely be there if he stays out of foul trouble. I think he's fine. But, yeah, Ben will come in at a fraction of the ownership as Scoot for $100 left just because he's coming off the bench and Scoot's starting. And we've seen Ben mm -hmm. definitely have a ceiling there. So, yeah, very important news. DeJounte news is important. I just hope he's in, though, because I really do like DeJounte as a spend. Plenty of value to get there, 9.8K. Like, you can go LeBron, DeJounte. You can go DeJounte, Brunson. Granted, they're both point guard. It would be a little harder there. But <laughs> but there's enough value on the slate, and you're not playing the Luka Giannis's, um to make it work for double spend. Three games left on the slate. Actually, I said three games. There's actually four because I'm X in this game. Clippers, Philly, we have, what, two – 15 total, Clippers six and a half point favorites. Ubre's question on the Philly side. The Clippers are healthy. When the Clippers are healthy, I don't play any of the big three. Same thing for me today. They're still without Embiid. They've been like that, though. I mean, tough matchup for Maxi, 8.8K. I'd rather the Brunsons, the DeJantes, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, I'm wasting my breath speaking. You got anything on this one? If Ubre's out, does it do anything? No, I think that it's just getting too cute playing anybody in this game. Um, I'll mention, but this is probably just for future reference because the Clippers' defense has been really bad this month. Uh, 118.6 defensive rating this month, which is third worst in the league. Over that stretch, transition defense has been really bad. Their on-ball defense really not been that great outside of Kawhi Leonard. Giving up a ton of three-pointers as, as well, bottom three and three-point defense this month. But, yeah, the matchup is just – like. The, so the Sixers have been one of the worst offenses in the league since Embiid has gone down, so I don't think that you're running to play any of these guys. So, yeah, X out for me. Hey, too sharp. You beat him by a couple seconds. It is on overlay, though, so Eddie's saying the same thing as you. Sorry, my man, SWH. Hey, but it's good. If I don't like this game, Rio doesn't like it, that means a bunch of people don't like it, which means ownership will be low, which means, hey, if this game does go off or whatever piece you like, that's how you get to the top of the leaderboards. You can eat other chalk around it if you like pieces in this game, because all of them will be sub 5% or something like that. So I said two games cross off, 10 games late, eight games late. There's a couple throughout though that we didn't like much. That is the goal. Try and make a, a big slate, a hard slate, shrink it down, make it easier, have a plan with injury news. We talked about DeJounte at 730, which is really big. Three games left. We're going to touch on this one right here. Lakers and the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, we have a 223 and a half total Lakers four and a half point favorites. Lakers side, LeBron questionable, AD questionable. LeBron missed yesterday. AD played 52 minutes, double OT, beat my bucks. Had to have some dude at the gym today. Dude decks out in Laker gear constantly, every single day. He knew I was a Bucks fan. We talked, I guess, in the past. 
he did a parlay and he bet the Bucks because he heard LeBron was out. And that man did not stop bitching to me for 20 minutes about he has all these tattoos, his kids saying that he has to take off his arm. He's not a loyal fan, all this. Yeah, I had to go on that spiel because it was very interesting this morning. But I assume we'll be betting against the Lakers again because AD midday downgrade coming off 52 minutes. I mean, I just don't see how he put like it feels like he's gonna sit in the spot. Feels like they planned it. The LeBron yesterday, maybe not. Maybe if it didn't go to double OT, AD would have played this game. But I think AD sits. I think LeBron plays. Memphis side, Brandon Clark's questionable. Luke Kennard out. Conchar doubtful. Vince Williams doubtful. I don't really care about the Memphis side much. Uh, so I'll let you take that one away. But if there's no AD, LeBron at 10 2 as the highest priced guy in the slate, assuming AD's out, gotta have interest there. D Russ 7 5, Reeves coming off a big game. Curious to see what you think of those like Reeves, D Russ, some secondary pieces. If it's LeBron and not AD, in my mind, it only gets a it gets better in the fact of like LeBron will find the open guy, he'll pass a little more, but the ball handling will go down for those guys a little bit because AD obviously doesn't do that. But he gets more low posts, like ISO one on ones, which he can pass out of the double team. But just thinking basketball and stuff like that, assuming AD's out, what are you doing in this game and how does it affect the D Russ, the Reeves, the secondary pieces? Start with that. Yeah, I mean, Reeves has been the guy that has kind of benefited the most in uh, minutes with Anthony Davis off the court this season. I believe he sees the biggest uptick in usage and his um, DK per 36 numbers. So give me one second. I'm getting this pulled up right now. But, yeah, I mean, Anthony uh, – I'm expecting Anthony Davis to sit the midday downgrade with the knee. He actually – it's a true injury, too. He did get a little banged up in that game. Um, just makes a ton of sense. He played 52 minutes last night, played 40 – uh, minutes in back-to-back games before that as well. I mean, this guy's just playing every minute right now, so I think they kind of just have to give him the night off. Um, I think they can still win this game without Anthony Davis. Definitely going to be a lot harder because I think that, I mean, the this team right now, the, the Grizzlies, obviously not the greatest team, but you still have NBA-caliber guys and Jaron Jackson, Desmond Bain, Santi Aldama. Um, I think that, like, Gigi Jackson's kind of coming on a little bit as a pro. Scotty Pippen Jr. looks pretty solid. Um, possibly getting back Brandon Clark, who was a big, uh, big piece of that that uh, playoffs Grizzlies team the last couple of years. So they're definitely getting more competitive. So I think that this game is definitely not a gimme if Anthony Davis were to be in or out. Uh, yeah, Austin Reeves sees a 5.1 percent usage bump, averaging around um, around 40 DraftKings points per 36. D'Angelo Russell sees a little bit of a bump too, around 3 percent. LeBron's near 4 percent. So really, all these guys are are going to get a big bump. Um, made the rule last game to have no more than two of the big three for the Lakers. Definitely hurt because obviously the double overtime. Austin Reeves, I said he didn't have seventy point upside. Then he goes out and puts up a triple double and what was it seventy two points something like that. Um, yeah, so I mean, yeah, I have interest in these guys for sure. If Anthony Davis were to be out, I probably still gonna side with D'Angelo Russell just because I think the matchup's a little bit better. The Grizzlies been kind of uh, going back to the normal ways of defense, being a really good rim defense with Jaron Jackson down low, and then becoming more of a three point catch and shoot funnel. So that kind of gets me onto D'Lo a little bit more. I would prefer him to Reeves at their price tags. He's actually cheaper than Reeves right now. Um, I know that it's the point guard, shooting guard stuff that probably, you know people end up getting more Reeves because of that, but I still prefer the upside on a night-to-night basis from D'Lo. And, then, yeah, Le- LeBron would be probably the best spin up on the slate, in my opinion, um, if Anthony Davis were to be out. Um, yeah, I don't know. don't have much to say about that. I think that he's a really, really strong spin up option. So I've seen him be pretty good in, in minutes without Anthony Davis this season. That doesn't have the best number. There's only been three games this season that Anthony Davis has missed. Um I forgot the numbers, but he, he had a couple down games with Anthony Davis out the court and just like one really good game. And then, yeah, Jackson Hayes is – he probably comes in pretty low owned just because I think a lot of people are going to go to the Brunos. They're going to go to the some of the earlier values. But, I, I mean, if you just kind of plan for Anthony Davis being out, I'm probably just going to bump his projection up to like 25, 26. That's about what he averages with Anthony Davis uh, in games that AD has missed this season. And this is kind of a different situation, too, because in in some of those earlier games, they had Christian Wood. They don't have Christian Wood right now. So they are really thin in the front court. So, you know, 
Hayes might be penciled in for 32 to 34 minutes, and he'd be one of the one of the better values in the slate. I know that you're you're a big Jackson Hayes guy, so you'd probably be excited to play minutes. him. Oh gosh, that's a lock of all locks, man. Come on, that's music to my ears. The only downside I think that you can kind of say about it is the matchup because Jaron Jackson Jr. does a he's very good at drawing fouls, uh, so he'd have to keep his hands to himself. Wouldn't be surprised if they put Rui on him because they we they put Rui on guys like uh, like Nikola Jokic this season. So I wouldn't be surprised to kind of do the Rui thing on Jaron and then just have Jackson Hayes floating a little bit because uh, you can put Hayes on Santi. I think he can kind of hold his own against him. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pretty excited about playing Hayes as a value tonight. And then on the Grizzly side of things, I mean, I have a lot more interest than projections do right now because – yeah, with, with no Anthony Davis, the rim defense is going to be much worse. The Lakers already been pretty bad defensively uh, this whole season, especially this month. Their bottom seven defensive rating, giving up more rim points, even with Anthony Davis in there. Their transition defense has been bad all season long. Uh, been a huge three-point funnel all season long. So, yeah, I mean, these guys have pretty good matchups. We, I mean, the Grizzlies have been – it's kind of like the Sixers. The, the matchup's good for them. Uh, against the Clippers, but their offense has been bad. I mean, the Grizzlies have been really bad this season. Even with Bain back in the lineup, they're still struggling. But we know that Bain is a good player. We know Jaron Jackson Jr. is a good player. I think that this is a good game for them to turn it around. So I think uh, Triple J, very interesting at 8.2K. Kind of sucks he's only center eligible now, but I think that the upside is definitely there for him. I really like the spot for Bain. Always liked attacking the Lakers with opposing guards. And, I mean, every game that passes, the minutes are going to start to climb up and up and up a little bit. So. Yeah, I think that he's got a ton of ups that we've seen 50 to 60 out of him earlier this season with uh, with no John Morant. Um, so he looks really good. And then Scotty Pippen Jr., I will mention at 5.2K, probably don't need to go there now with uh, with Giddy and, and the Bantons and Scoot Hendersons, but should be pretty clear to play around upper 20s minutes, maybe 30 minutes in this game. And Lakers are bottom two DVP versus point guards over their last seven games. No Conchar, no Vince Williams should definitely give him uh, the upside for minutes. Um, that's pretty much all I'm considering. I think Gigi's just okay, but probably a little bit less upside for him with uh, with Bain getting healthier. Great breakdown for sure. Scotty Pippen's definitely my favorite if I had to pick a Memphis guy. The usage is there. Last two games, 23-26. He'll handle the ball. AD if he's out, the rim presence. I mean, Jackson is a solid defender down there. But it's mainly just Jaron Jackson, the just center eligible. He'll be 1% owned, 2% owned. So I don't hate that shout. And you also, if you have like, we don't get the LeBron new, or the AD news or something like that, if you have some flexibility, plenty of games at 7, 30, and 8 to mess around with stuff. I uh, love the Jackson Hay shout. And I actually wanted to show, while I'm showing this, back up five Harry Giles minutes at mid price 3K. I mean, you're talking low owned stuff like that. Is that something you can get behind? Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind it. I'm not sure exactly how much you would really like. How many minutes would you think that he got if if AD is out? Like 16? Yeah, I think 16, 7. Like, I, I'm not convinced Jackson Hayes is getting his 32 minutes. I would love it. We just hardly ever see it. Like, I think that's and if Jackson Hayes does get in foul trouble, like you're talking stuff, Giles even has more minutes upside there. But I think 15 to yeah, 18, you can pretty comfortably, yeah. Yeah, they probably would run a little bit more Rui at the center too. I would imagine. I, I just don't really LeBron, know. LeBron, yeah, LeBron, Rui so they, Yeah, they have ways to get around it because it's not like Memphis. Like I don't think that Jaron is really even a like a true center. He's more of like a hybrid four or something like that. You know, he's he's got the ball handling. Um, I, I guess he'd be like a little bit undersized in terms of centers, but um, yeah, I don't I don't really know what I would expect from from uh harry giles because i know that they still they still need to win games so they're gonna approach this game as if they want to win it i just don't really know if giles gives them much of a chance yeah fair enough so i wanted to show right here this is i'm just going to show the value piece this is the slate plan at chippinnation.com we have upper tier mid tier lower tier and you can see how much time rio puts into all of these breakdowns down here again this is all premium it's the last day for nba on the show so i wanted to show it out Scotty Pippen mentioned right here in this one, and the Jackson Hayes. It is such a good pivot from Bruno. Like, if we are right about it, if we don't have the AD uh, news before lock, we could get that right. Like, he's going to be so low on as a pivot. So you can see a little bit. 
just want to show off what you all get, including projections right here. Actually, I'll click on the projections quick to show we can you can sort it salary point per dollar what slates it's on if it's just the night slate if it's on the main slate you can download a csv fanduel projections as well again this is updated throughout the night showdown projection slate plan rio does this monday through saturday so much success i'm blanking on the dude's name in discord i thought it was like dpos something 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 600 bucks yesterday first place gave rio a very nice shout out rio gave him a nice compliment how he uses the product GPP core report, we don't want you spending too much time on it, but if you only have five minutes, you want to see who Rio's playing or you want to play one team with this core, you can definitely do that. But again, I think projections, listen to this, using ceiling rankings, correlation sleet shapes, correlation sheet, slate plan, build your lineup yourself, try and figure out a process instead of just copying a core report. We do have that though, cash core report, FanDuel DraftKings by myself in the streets. If you want to see who I'm locking in, the chalkiest plays usually is what I try to do. You can check out the cast report as well. And I will, a little bit for MLB, what to expect. Same thing, projections updated throughout the night. We'll have a slate plan every single day just like this. Cast report from myself, GPP core report like that. Stack rankings, hitter rankings, pitcher rankings. I know many of you are familiar from last year at Shipping Nation. Very excited for this stuff. Only gets better as the year goes than just the basics in the MLB street. So that's coming up. If you want to check out all of our MLB product, again, this is what you have offered. You need projections, we got them. You need some tools, we got them. Slate plan, similar to like Rio does, cash GPP core reports as well. Awesome stuff on that breakdown. I just wanted to show off your uh, lower tier. Awesome stuff on your breakdown of the slate plan. I'm not talking to myself in third person about that. Awesome uh, breakdowns, though, is the value. And again, upper tier, mid tier, he has lists of the players, goes very in-depth with that as well three games left on the slate rio houston rockets okc thunder big big game to talk about on this slate without sga 226 and a half total okc still four and a half point favorites no injury news to worry about on the houston side sga is out for the thunder that happened what 15 20 minutes before we went on the show what does that mean jalen williams giddy two of the most popular plays on the slate now um, yeah, I mean, I expect it to be Giddy, Kaysen Wallace, Lou Dort, Jalen Williams, Chet starting. Tell me if I'm wrong. I think Chet's interesting at center. He's not going to get a ton of ownership. Like he's going to be somewhat owned, but he's just center eligible with Bruno, with Capella, if a Jackson Hayes, et cetera, positional scarcity a bit. 7.5K isn't free. People will go to Jalen Williams with the power forward eligibility. Giddy looks really good at 5'9". Kaysen Wallace maybe has value. I'm not really sure what Lou Dort, like SGA being out, what does that really do for Lou Dort? He sits in the corner anyway. To be honest, I could argue maybe it hurts him because uh, drawing kicks from SGA, defenders on him. There won't be too many eyes as much on Giddy or Wallace to double and help for a corner three. So, yeah, OKC side, start with that. Very important SGA news and then talk about Houston. Yeah, uh, Giddy for me is the best play on the slate now by a pretty wide margin. We have a very large sample dating back to what the last three years. It's been a pretty, uh, pretty sizable sample of games without SGA in in their career, and he's averaging. Uh, I had it. I forgot where I had it, but I think it's like thirty nine DK points per game. Has multiple triple doubles under his belt in games without SGA. So don't really care about the matchup being. Tough against Houston. Houston's playing really good right now, by the way. Nine straight wins, top two ranked offense, top four ranked defense in the month of March. Um, yeah, they're they're just playing great right now without Singoon. But they're also playing a lot faster as well, so this is a pretty solid game environment on a whole because we know that OKC, one of the better transition teams, one of the better uh, teams are playing up in pace. So, yeah, game environment as a whole is, is really good in this one. You might get really low ownership on some of these Rockets guys. They're very hard for me to get to just because the price tag is coming up a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think that Jalen Green at 8.9K, is he's definitely deserved this price tag. He has been crushing it this month, averaging 44.3 DK points with a 28-point-per-game stat line, 5.8 rebounds, 3.4 assists per game. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that I would still probably try to get some of him in, in my portfolio if I'm MME tonight because uh, OKC, as great of a defense they are, great as a team they are, still pretty – Poor against three-point shooters. Definitely gets catch-and-shoot guys. 
So that definitely gives me interest in Jalen Green and Fred Van Fleet. Um, I'll still continue to be a max one of them at these price tags, but I think I just prefer Jalen Green because I know that he's got the 60-point upside in his bag. But, yeah, I'm just breaking down the Rockets side real quick because I think that it's just those two guys up top. I don't think you're looking to get to Amen now with Jabari Smith back. Rebounding rate should come down a little bit. He's also 7K, which is tough for a guy that doesn't really have any scoring ability outside of, uh, you know, dunks and putbacks, things like that. Um, which I guess he, you know, maybe he has a little bit of upside here just because OKC, one of the worst offensive rebounding teams that give up the most points off offensive puts, putbacks, but it's kind of a tough thing to hang your hat on in terms of somebody getting, uh, hitting their upside from a DFS standpoint. So pretty much just Fred and Jalen Green for me on the Rocket side of things. And then, yeah, I already mentioned Jalen, uh, Josh Giddy going to be my top play on the night. I prefer Jalen Williams over Chet just because he's going to see more ball handling. We've seen him kind of command a lot of usage in the second unit when SGA is off the court, usually in that in that second quarter uh, when SGA takes a little bit of a rest. So Jalen Williams, 7K, looks really strong to me. Um, and then, yeah, Kaysa Wallace, he's going to be starting most likely. 4K looks pretty good. It, it's just the numbers look really good from an on-off-the-court perspective for all these OKC guys. So it's really just trying to pinpoint who is or isn't going to play. Because, I mean, you could you can make case for a lot of these guys, like Aaron Wiggins, Average is 28.6 DK points per 36 with SG off the court. Kaysen Wallace up to 26. Jalen Williams over 40. Chet around 44. Josh Giddy obviously around 37. Even Lou Dort is at 30 and a half. Um, yeah, so it's just the OKC has, they've gone, they don't have like the same rotation every night. So it's very hard to pinpoint what they're going to do. Um, but Kaysen Wallace is definitely the safest. I, I definitely have interest in Isaiah Joe and Wiggins though, just because we've seen them have really big games off the bench. You know, Isaiah Joe, very, very good shooter. Rockets, a little bit more vulnerable to three-point shooters as of lately. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of kind of hard to break down. I think I'm just going to be – just going to lock in Giddy and probably Jalen Williams and then move on. Isaiah Joe is probably – I mean, there's too many guys sub 4K right now to go through all of them. But I think he's my favorite right now. At shoot guard forward eligibility 3.4k he can he needs the threes to go in but he's one of the best at least field goal per, three point percentage guys in the league at, at three four would you like him or would you like like the Watford Wilsons if Cam Thomas was out for Brooklyn I probably would like Wilson a little bit better yeah I think I think that's right um he doesn't have the guard eligibility but feels like the floor he's he just has more ways to get the floor is higher with the rebounding the peripherals and I guess both guys' ceiling's pretty similar. Yeah, good breakdown there. Uh, your Fred Van Vliet, Jalen Green, Max one. But if you do get one of them, people are going to be playing a lot of OKC. People aren't going to be playing Houston. I mean, that's a, it's not football. And even in football, you don't have to run it back, et cetera. But there is some merit, I guess, if you load up on one side, hope someone on the other side keeps it close, goes off. Maybe you get OT, et cetera. I don't hate that at low ownership. They have some upside. Uh, that's a good question. FanDuel, Jalen Williams or D'Lo, same price. Uh, I probably go Jalen Williams because he's got the the steals upside, um, steals and blocks upside. Where that's definitely a lot more valuable over there. So yeah, Jalen Williams would be the guy for me. I do think ownership uh, leans that way as well. I think Jalen Williams will be ve- pretty popular, very popular, and D Russ. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, if AD's out, all those guys will uh, will get a bump as well, and they lock at the same time. I lean Jalen Williams slightly there as well. Two games left, Rio. Awesome stuff. These last two. This game, I think, the, the Bulls-Pacers game is interesting. Detroit-Minnesota, not interesting for me. But, yeah, let's touch on the interesting game. Big total in this one. Pacers-Bulls, 235.5. Pacers, only three-point favorites. Game could get even better. TJ McConnell questionable. Aaron Neesmith questionable. That's important news on this slate. There's no doubt about that. Um, and kind of like you mentioned earlier, if we don't get all this 8 p.m. Eastern news, maybe that is more merit to not play anyone in the first game or just one or two pieces. However, all these games, 10 of them, lock within an hour. It's the NBA, so I never know. But hopefully there's a chance we get all this injury news prior to lock, which would be nice. Um, but, yeah, Neesmith, McConnell, Q tags important. Chicago side, Caruso, Q-Tag. It doesn't mean as much what Torrey Craig would start, though. I'll throw it to you on that. Would you have any interest at a 3.7K Torrey Craig at power forward eligibility? By then, we might have Jackson Hayes or some other better value. 
I don't think it'd be the craziest play, but McConnell and Neesmith, if those two were to miss, my man Tyrese, he's staring at me at 9.2K, but there's a lot of options in that 9K range, especially at the point guard position. So I'm not sure I could really get there. Maybe an OB top in, something like that. Take, take it away. Start with these Q tags though, on the Indiana side, Neesmith McConnell. Um, yeah, so very big injury news because we've seen both these guys really fill in big roles for this team. It's uh, you know a little bit shorthanded, but um, yeah, I mean the the Neesmith stuff pretty big because we saw Jairus Walker take on a really big role last game, and I would probably expect something different. He got talked up pretty pretty nicely by uh, Rick Carlisle, just saying that he's you know really smart player, pays attention in film. He's um, they kind of wanted to start getting some more run as well, so I think that he's kind of locked in to get the get that run if Neesmith were to miss. And then TJ dealing with the ankle thing, he hasn't missed a game in in a quite some time. But if he does miss, probably just a safer minutes floor for Nemhard. Probably get a higher minutes floor for Ben Shepard, who got the start last game for Neesmith. Um, but yeah, I mean those guys both would look pretty good because uh, the Bulls. This defense has been very bad lately. They're uh, where they bottom two in defensive rating in March, giving up more points at the rim where they've been pretty solid, but they've been one of the biggest three point funnels all season long. They're dead last in catch and shoot defense. Um, also bottom three pick and roll roll men defense this month or th this season. Whereas the Pacers, they played a little bit better defense as of late. We kind of put up a couple bad games lately, but they're dead last in pick and roll defense. Um, and then one of the best teams that takes away a three point line. So Start with the the bull side of things. A little bit easier for me to break down because I really only have interest in Demar Derozan, eight point four K, kind of taking on a bigger ball handling role as of late. I think he leads the team in pick and roll scoring this season as well. Um, had pretty you know really good success versus his team. Really just in one game, it's kind of inflated because he's averaging uh, like forty six DraftKings points, but he had a sixty seven point game against the Pacers earlier this month. Um, yeah, I don't, he'd be my favorite option on the bull side of things. Don't really want to get to Vooch, 8.5K. Kobe White not playing too well right now. Uh, as far as the Caruso and Torrey Craig stuff go, uh, it's actually been Torrey Craig that's been starting. They started to go with Caruso off the bench, but they're pretty much a one-for-one -one swap, so I would be a max one of those guys because we saw Craig play like 19 minutes last game in a start, and Caruso got up to 32. But, yeah, I mean, that's pretty big injury news as well because if Caruso misses, you're looking at a – Pretty easy matchup for Tyrese Halliburton, who already crushes this matchup historically, averaging 53 draft, drafting points in three games versus Chicago this season, has a 19.3.7 rebound and almost a 16 assist average per game against this team. The shot is struggling a little bit, but he's kind of showing a little bit more confidence. He's shooting it a little bit more now. Uh, shot six for nine against, against, El, uh, against the Clippers last game from deep and then four for eight from Gold State. Couple of games ago, so he's kind of coming back to life a little bit, and this is a really good spot for three point shooters. So I, I definitely have interest in Halliburton coming in very low owned in a matchup that he's historically done very well against in a matchup where the the Bulls are uh, really struggling defensively. I think that he's a very strong spin up. Same thing for Siakam; he's been playing really well lately. Um, I don't know; he's just I'm never too excited about playing Siakam. Always comes in pretty high owned, kind of the you know the the Demar Derozan thing. He's kind of buried us a little bit more lately, starting to show a little bit of upside, but I'm kind of okay just getting away from him and trying to find upside elsewhere in my lineup. Uh, but Miles Turner is a guy that I have interest in, 6.6K. He's been playing really well lately and uh, has done very well in this same matchup, which makes a ton of sense when you look at it. Like I mentioned, the Bulls are bottom three against pick and roll roll men this season, and Miles Turner is third in the league in points per game in those type of situations. So I really like the spot for him, averaging close to 41 DK points in three games versus uh, India uh, versus Chicago this season. And then as far as the secondary guys, I already mentioned that it, I would like Jarris Walker for sure if Neesmith were to be out. And then um, I guess Shepard would be a little bit more interesting if if McConnell misses, but I, I don't know. don't think that he's got a ton of upside. I think Jarris Walker actually does have upside. Yeah, Shepard, I mean, he's more of a cardio guy, it looks like to me. I like the Walker shout, though. He'll be low-owned. Miles Turner minutes, I guess all these Pacers, like Halliburton's minutes have been down a little as of late. Turner hasn't seen 30 in a week and a half, like 26, 28, 26. 20, like, are you nervous at all about some of these minutes, Caps? Like, can, can Tyrese get 35 minutes a day? Can Turner get you 32, 33 minutes? Because on a 10-game slate, we want 
we want big boy scores. And I think you, you need these ceiling outcomes, I guess, in terms of minutes to try and get there. So you feel good that Turner can get over 30 and, and Tyrese can get 35? Not as – I don't feel as good about Turner's minutes because they do have a good amount of guys that they mix in at the front court with Jalen Smith, Isaiah Jackson, Obi Toppin, all kind of filling in there. But I do think that Tyrese could get up there, especially if TJ McConnell were to miss. We've seen at times, you know, a lot of times the season where TJ comes in and just takes over in the second unit, and then they don't really have to bring in Tyrese. Like he can just he can rest a little bit. And obviously, they want to give him rest dealing with, you know, those groin and hamstring injuries, whatever it is that he was dealing with earlier this season. So, um, yeah, I would feel much better about Tyrese hit from a minute standpoint if TJ McConnell were to miss than uh, than anything. I like it. We got one game left on the slate. Appreciate everyone hanging out. Hope you enjoy hour 10 talking all nine games so far. Last game on the slate has some injury news. Yeah, we'll see what Rio says about it. Does not look good to me on paper with the big spread, though. Last NBA show, last game. Awesome stuff, Rio. As always, and again, if you want to join us at the nation, Mayo is the promo code. Gets you 10% off. Hit that like as well. Hit that subscribe button. Helps us out a ton. 8 p.m. Eastern, Minnesota Timberwolves, Detroit Pistons, biggest spread on the slate. Timberwolves, 15 and a half point favorites, 216 total. Detroit side, Cade questionable, Jaden Ivey questionable. Minnesota side, Ant questionable, Gobert questionable. Now, of course, if all these dudes missed, yeah, especially on the Minnesota side, I'd even have, I'd have more interest. Like, no, Ant would be naw. Gobert, Nas Reed would be a great play, even though he is, his uh, price has come up. Has power forward eligibility, though. Ant never misses, though. Gobert feels always questionable. He's played the last two games. On the other side with, like, Cade and Ivy, yeah, I mean, I guess Sasser would be interesting at 5-1 because they don't have too many guys in the backcourt. But, I mean, I don't know. I guess they could still go Malachi Flynn. If both the Cade and Ivy were to miss, I still think 5-1 I'd have some interest in Sasser. Malachi at 3-7, I don't know. Fournier would have to handle maybe the ball a little more. 3-9, Troy Brown, 3-7. I don't know. It's 8 p.m. Eastern. I guess I'll throw it to you. Start with this Detroit side. Do you even think Cade or Ivy are at risk of missing? I think I need both of them to be out, though, to really have interest in these Detroit guys. I just don't like the 15 and a half points. Like, Minnesota's going to kill them. Their starters don't need all, all the minutes. I'm not playing the backup game on a 10-game slate. Just a cross off to make it seven games, if anything. But we have to talk about these Q tags. Yeah, I mean Ivy midday downgrade, never good. I think Kate's kind of been dealing with this for a little bit. His is a injury management thing, right? Like it's not. Is it still I, the the knee? I, I see um, knee, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So injury management for him, he's been off for a little bit. So hasn't. I don't really know. Twenty second. Yeah, not not too sure if they're just kind of shutting him down. For a little bit, um, I guess the Ivy probably looks a little bit more on the doubtful side of things. I just don't want to have a strong lean. Sasser did get downgraded to probable as well with the illness thing. So, I mean, that's kind of alarming as well to even list him with even as probable. But, yeah, I mean, as it stands right now, no interest in the Detroit side of things. Could definitely change because, if yeah, I mean, they're just going to be super shorthanded. If, if Cade and Ivy miss, you could definitely go back to Sasser regardless of how bad the matchup is. And it's probably one of the worst matchups on paper um, on tonight's slate. I mean, outside of the Toronto facing the Knicks, I don't think that there's a better defense right now than the the Timberwolves on this slate. So, yeah, I don't know. I would probably, if those guys miss, I would probably just try to get down to like Malachi Flynn because he's cheap at 3.7. He's shown pretty solid upside right around 30 DraftKings points in back-to-back -back games, played 25 and 30 minutes. He, I mean, he's been pretty solid as a fantasy producer dating back to his days with uh, Toronto and, and New York even. So I don't know. I don't. I mean, like Buddy Bayheim's getting a little bit more minutes. Jared Roden's getting minutes. I mean, you're just not excited about playing any of these guys. I'm not I'm not playing Evan Fournier in, in 2024. It's just not not worth it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't have any just interest. Just Detroit. That's the, yeah. that's the easy way to go. Oh, that's all yeah. Cade's in. What about Minnesota? Yeah. Minnesota, I definitely have interest though. It's mainly uh, Anthony Edwards because we know he's going to play. He's he plays through everything. Um, I think that he's great option tonight. I think that he could get there in three quarters. Uh, definitely worried about the blowout for him, but he's averaging fifty three DK points per game without Cat this season. Yeah, I mean he's he's uh, probably one of the better spend ups tonight in my opinion, unless LeBron 
is uh, in there without Anthony Davis, I probably would prefer LeBron just because the game's going to be a little bit closer. But yeah, I don't see any way that Anthony Davis or Anthony Edwards doesn't pay off this tag or have a really good scoring night. So I think that he's great. And I, I'm kind of off Rudy right now. Just the, the fantasy upside has kind of been taking a hit a little bit, playing alongside Nas a lot more lately, probably taking some upside off of him. Um, also questionable, this could be definitely be a game where he gets a sit just because they don't really need him against Detroit. But, yeah, I mean, I, I really like Nas Reed tonight. He's coming in with no ownership, 6.8K. I mean, he's been crushing it as a starter this season, averaging close to 40 drafting points a game. I think he's going to continue to start. The Pistons matchup is great for him. They're bottom five versus DVP, uh, bottom five in DVP versus power forwards the last seven games. So I really like Nas at no ownership tonight. and. That's pretty much it. I'm just looking at those two. I guess if, if Gobert misses, then you could consider uh, Luca Garza at 3.6K. I don't think that he's going to start. They I think just, yeah, yeah. Nas of the five. Yeah. I think they'll just slide him up, and then um, yeah, they're probably going to bring in Anderson. I think Anderson's been coming off the bench, so they probably just slide him in there at the four. That's what I think, too. But you would give Nas – you like Nas even if Gobert's in, but you like him even more, obviously, if Gobert's out, some rebounding bump, or do you not see too much of a bump? Obviously, usage not as much with Gobert, but rebounding definitely yeah, takes a bump. rebounding for sure. But I, I still think that he's got a ton of upside in this matchup. I'm definitely going to be playing him regardless. He'll be dead. Really low owning. You can play him at power forward right there as well. And, I mean, you it also – that's an 8 p.m. Eastern. Just say somehow this AD news – is late or this Pacers news or whatever is kind of late and you're scrambling that just more spots at 8 p.m. Eastern to, to navigate with, but hoping with all 10 games locking within an hour, we have almost all of that news. That's all 10 games, man. Hour 15 talking hoops on this 10 game slate. You deserve the Millie tonight, Rio. Fortunately, life doesn't always work that way with the grind. You have a chance though. You are live. Appreciate those words. Take down best in the industry and awesome discord. Definitely. An awesome Discord, a lot of it because of people like, hey, could be Travis. I see him once in a while in the Discord. A lot of people watching YouTube, helping people out in the Discord. Till next time, NBA, until next time is right. You'll be seeing some quick hit NBA videos on the Ship Nation channel. It's MLB time, though, with opening day. Again, we'll have you covered NBA content, of course, throughout the playoffs until the last game. You got to be a member, though. Use that promo code Mayo. Gets you 10% off. If you're just interested in our MLB package, we just have that as well. Go to our Twitter, check it out. Monthly comes out to a dollar a day. Use the promo code MLB15. A dollar a day, 33 bucks a month. We have our whole season package in there as well to check out. The Mayo 10 gets you, or Mayo gets you 10% off all the sports though PGA, MMA, NASCAR, MLB, NHL, NBA. I mean, NFL will be here, college football, all the sports. Can't beat the price. Can't beat the content. Awesome stuff, Rio. We appreciate that, Tar Heel. Appreciate that, Jasmine. Stage is yours, Rio. Take it away. Last show. No, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for tuning along. All these shows every year, it's been a blessing being able to do this and hang out with my guy Title every uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah, I'm already looking forward to doing some shows for next season. Definitely, you'll see me in the MLB streets coming up once NBA is done. But yeah, we're still still a ton of money to be made in NBA. We got you know a couple of weeks left regular season. Postseason is going to be really fun as well. Definitely going to be doing a lot of showdown stuff for for that. So yeah, thank you to everybody for tuning in every single week. Appreciate it. Absolutely, we appreciate you. And yes, you will be seeing Rio on some MLB content once the NBA season is over. But he's going to keep. His focus there, million dollar cheat. I like that incoming. That's a good note to get out on. Oh, I'm going to leave that. That's how you manifest it right here, baby. <laughs> Appreciate everyone hanging out. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. On the way out, 1 p.m. Eastern MLB show tomorrow for opening day on the Ship and Nation channel. Ham, G Rising, two great MLB minds. Have you covered there? Good stuff, Rio. Appreciate everyone hanging out. Hit that like, hit that subscribe on the way out. For my man, Rio, I'm Title Town. Be safe.